Hello and welcome to Learning Journal. You're learning modern technologies and you need infrastructure for your exercises and proof of concepts. However, as you are still in college, you do not have a lot of money to buy expensive machines. How will you learn if you don't have access to required computers, softwares and other infrastructure sources? In this video, we will help you understand the Microsoft Azure student offer and guide you to take advantage of this fantastic cloud infrastructure plan. If you are in college and pursuing a full-time four-year degree in science and technology, you might be eligible for the Microsoft Azure student offer. If you qualify, you get access to 25 plus free products for 12 months. These free products include following main items and many other things. You get a 750R of a B1S virtual machine every month. The B1S machine comes with one CPU and one GB RAM. The SSD option makes it fast enough. You can use 264 GB disks. You can use 15 GB data transfer. All these limits are monthly. That means your quota renews every month. If you think that might not be enough, you get a hundred dollar credit for one year with a student subscription. The most important thing is that you do not even need to provide your credit card details. However, if you are not an eligible student, you still get all those 25 plus free resources for 12 months, but you must provide your credit card and upgrade to a payable subscription after a month of evaluation period. Even if you are not a student, I recommend you to get a subscription and spend a small amount on your skill development. The cloud skills are the key to your growth. Great. In this video, I'll demonstrate you to get a free Linux machine in Microsoft Cloud for students. I'll also help you understand some basics of operating in Azure Cloud. So let's start. We have captured the screen for one of the students that are participating in our mentorship program at Learning Journal. Follow these steps. Start Microsoft Azure portal. Scroll down and look for the student link. Read the FAQ for eligibility. The good part of this program is that you do not need to provide a credit card or debit card information. You will also get a $100 free credit for 12 months. If you are eligible, go back and click on the activate now button. I am assuming that you don't already have a Microsoft account. So create a new one. You need to provide a phone number or an email address for your account ID. We recommend you to give an email address. We also recommend that you register with your college email address for the account creation. However, you can use your personal email address as well and provide college email address for verification at a later stage. Create a password for your Microsoft account. Microsoft will send a verification code to your email address. Check your email and type in the verification code. They might also ask for the CAPTCHA code. Well, there are many verification but all that is for a good reason. Great, your Microsoft account is ready. Now you need to verify your claim to be a genuine student. We'll be using a college email address for the verification. Enter your official college email address and hit the verify button. If your college is in Microsoft's database of valid colleges, you'll receive an email from Microsoft Azure to your college email address. The email that you received contains an activation link. Click on the link and you'll land to another registration page. You need to fill in your details. The registration page has three mandatory fields country, email address, and your national identification. If you are in India, it will be a PAN card number. I expected it to be Aadhaar card number, but eventually they need a PAN card number. I hope you have a PAN card number. Enter all the details and move on to the next step. You need to verify your phone number. The last item is to accept the terms and conditions. If you want, you can read the details of the terms and conditions. That's it. Once you accept the terms and condition, You'll land onto the Azure dashboard. The process of registration is lengthy and sometimes irritating. However, you get the free credits. If you want to check your credit balance, follow these steps. Go to cost management and billing. Click on the manage button. The page shows your subscription type. Click on the subscription. Now click on the CD remaining credits. Great, your free student subscription is ready to use. I am assuming that you acquired an Azure student subscription or a standard paid subscription. Now we want to create a Linux virtual machine in Azure Cloud. Follow these steps. Click on the virtual machines menu item. Click on create button. Search for CentOS and choose a free image. Hit the create button. Fill in the necessary details like machine name, username, password, etc.
In the next step, you need to select the machine type. Let us choose the smallest available size. The B1S machine type is free for 750 hours in a month for your student subscription. The next step is for the machine and network settings. We keep everything to default except the public IP address. Change the assignment type to static. This option will assign a static IP address to your machine. That means Azure will assign a fixed IP address to your machine that won't change even if you restart your virtual machine after a few days. Click OK and it shows you the pricing details. Click create button and wait for a couple of minutes. Great, your Linux virtual machine is ready. If you already know a little bit of Linux, you know that Linux is all about doing things from a command line. We usually do not prefer to use Linux GUI. You can access your Linux command line using the following steps. Start Azure Cloud Shell. Get your SSH command and copy paste it into the Cloud Shell. Enter your password. That's it. You logged into your Linux machine. Your user comes with pseudo privileges. If you know Linux commands, you can start using it. Your Azure Linux virtual machine is secured in Azure Cloud using a firewall. That means no one can access your machine without firewall rule. However, your Linux virtual machine comes with some pre-configured firewall rules. Your default firewall rule allows TCP port 22 for SSH connections. That means you can connect to your machine using SSH tools. For example, you can log into a virtual machine from your browser using Cloud Shell. You can also connect to a virtual machine using an SSH tool like Putty. You can also connect to your machine using a file transfer tool like WinSCP. However, if you want to access your Linux virtual machine using any other protocol, you might need to create a firewall rule and allow connections to your virtual machine. Let me show you an example. We want to enable HTTP protocol for TCP port 80. A web server uses this protocol and the port. So, if you are going to deploy a website on this Linux machine, you must create a firewall rule to open TCP port 80 for HTTP protocol. You can follow these steps to do that. Go to your Azure dashboard and look for the network security group. Click on the inbound security rules. Click on the add button. Select basic and choose HTTP service. Click on the add button. That's it. Now you can install and configure a web server on this machine and deploy a website. If you want to upload some files to your Linux virtual machine from your local desktop or laptop, you can easily do that. There are many ways to do that. However, let me show you a couple of common methods. Upload via Cloud Shell. Upload using WinSCP. Let us talk about the first method. Follow these steps. Start your Cloud Shell. Upload your file using the Upload button. Your file is uploaded to the Azure storage. However, this file is not yet in your Linux virtual machine and you wanted to copy this file to the Linux machine, right? That's an easy thing. You can copy your file from the cloud storage to the Linux machine using the SCP command. Use below command to copy your file from Azure storage to your Linux virtual machine. I hope you understand that the above command may not work for everyone. You must change the file name, username and IP address according to your requirement. The second method is more straightforward. You need to download and install WinSCP tool. Once you have the WinSCP tool, Start the WinSCP. Connect to your Linux machine using the IP address and username password. 
that's it the left side shows files from your local machine and the right side shows file on your azure machine you can drag and drop your files from one side to the other the winscp is more convenient because you do not need to upload your files to intermediate azure storage we are directly copying a file between our local machine and the remote machine a running machine in a cloud is a cost to you even if the microsoft azure offered you a free plan you must develop a habit of minimizing the price and do not leave the running machines without reason we recommend you to log into the azure portal start your virtual machine do your work and stop the virtual machine after completing your work you can come back to the azure portal next day and start the machine once again and use it when you no longer need that machine you can delete the computer and all associated resources the critical point to remember is the other associated resources even if you remove the virtual machine there are a bunch of other related resources that azure do not clean up automatically most of them are reusable with other virtual machines but if you had a single virtual machine you might want to delete the unused resources as well great see you again in the next video thank you for watching learning journal keep learning and keep growing